What are some things you like about Berlin? <laughs> Welcome to another vlog. I've decided to attempt to do this one in English. I've been filming YouTube videos for over 10 years now and the only video I've ever ever done in English has been the video with Scott, my husband, where we talk about how I proposed to him. And that was actually not too bad and I've been craving a challenge. And so we're gonna attempt to do a nice little vlog here in Berlin in English. It's Saturday and we're gonna go to a showroom because we wanna maybe get a new sofa for the office. And then we're going to the park. Uh, we love Grunewald. It's a park some somewhere outside of Berlin. And our dog is obsessed with it because there's water, there's a lot of different dogs, and it's just the place to be for us on the weekends. Kind of get out into nature. And I'm wearing my new boots. Today's outfit of the day. So I'm wearing these cream jeans. I haven't worn light jeans in such a long time but um, I figured I want to mix it up a bit. And I think if you pair it with like a dark coat and then the black um, shoes, it makes it a bit, bit more winter appropriate. Also tank top, I was just feeling very spring summery today. Um, an oversized blue shirt from by Marlene, Marlene Birger. And then a black wool coat. This one's made of 100% organic, actually recycled wool. Um, and then a bag from Pauline Paris. And that's my look. approved what did you sit on this is the sofa we're thinking about but we're not so sure i'm not a big fan of corduroy and i don't know it's just not my style but it would be very practical you can take it apart sleep on it potentially and i would probably aim for this color but scott is like let's do something colorful what's your favorite color this one really yeah like a burnt orange i don't know or this one Maybe, maybe this one. I don't know, I feel like I always regret when I get something in a color. <laughs> I feel like if it was corduroy though, I'd want the tighter, a tighter corduroy. Well, you can't decide. That's all the materials they have. Yeah, I get it. <clears throat> I don't know, it just feels kind of cheap. I know, that's what I'm thinking. I yeah. like the style. I like that you can take it apart and kind of make a thing with it. I like those sofas back there, but for the living room, not for the office. Not for you, I <laughs> You want to test it too? She's like, guys, this is uh, also my bed, so I should probably give my opinion. Found a black hole to take a look at. Stößen sie Spandau. So we're, we've decided not to go to Grunewald because we wanted to try something new. And we're in Spandau, so we went to Stößen sie Spandau. They have a dog beach as well. We know it from the summertime, but we've never been here in the winter. So let's see what it has to offer. What are some things you like about Berlin? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even think about this yet. I like about Berlin that they are very, people here are very loose <clears throat> with dog rules. I feel like we've always had a good experience in nature, letting Ellie off the leash. In Austria, I feel like people are very strict about it. I feel like it's very, very freeing to be here because there's, first of all, there's a lot of woods and forests. So it's a great city generally but for there, dogs. There's two characters of dog owners here. People that yeah. come further outside the city and let their dogs run around and people that keep their dog on a leash full time. In the time city in the, the whole city. time. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think that's something that I really like about Berlin. I think a lot of cities don't have that. A lot of cities have designated areas, small little areas that are fenced in that are for dogs and everything else you have to have your dog on a leash. Um, yeah. Okay, one thing that I really like. <laughs> yeah. Berlin is one of the greenest cities in Europe. Yeah. And it's very easy with a car, without a car to get to lakes and forest yeah. and the downside though, and that's one of the things I don't like about it's Berlin. It's all flat. It's all flat. <laughs> <laughs> the, the biggest elevation gain that you can have yeah. is like maybe 20 meters. If that. And it's fake. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's old it's like World just, War II rubble. Yeah. One thing I like is friendships. I feel like Berlin is a very open-minded city with a lot of people that are maybe not from here. A lot of expats that are just like here to 
find friends and I feel like we've found a really amazing group of people that I've never ever ex I've never experienced friendships like this anywhere else and I've heard it from everyone I meet here that Berlin is one of the most fun cities to yeah have a group of friends in I've never experienced someone being very exclusive with their friend groups I feel mm -hmm. like everything's always open like oh bring someone or I'm bringing a friend like it's never a question if you can even bring someone to a gathering people just bring whoever they want to bring and it's not very like, oh, you can't be part of this group. So that's what I like about Berlin. Okay, pause. Okay, pause. <laughs> One more thing I dislike about Berlin is it's a very dirty city. Like, for someone who's creative and who likes to take photos for Instagram, um, I feel like it's hard to find a spot in Berlin that doesn't have graffiti on it and that looks decent enough. Um, even in the nicer areas, like in the neighborhood that we live in, that's actually kind of a nicer one, I feel like it's really hard to find an entranceway, a door, a wall, like a nice like street that is picturesque and doesn't have a lot of like dirt, trash or graffiti on it, which is kind of sad. Yeah. Um, and I usually go to like Mitte, to like the touristy areas, like uh, Museum Island to take photos and... It does give the city some really. character though. Yeah, I think if you're not someone who works in this field or who like needs beauty, then it's fine. But coming from Vienna, it's like very sad to live in a city that doesn't have like the, you know, like I, I wouldn't, when we have guests or something, like no one's like, wow, such a nice city you live in. <laughs> Unless we take them to Museum but Island. Vienna sometimes is like too sterile. Maybe. maybe. I mean, it's nice. Well, I wouldn't say sterile. I don't know. But, uh, Berlin just needs to get better graffiti artists. I think that's the problem. <laughs> it's not even nice graffiti. It's, that's it's the problem. People graffiti. just tag stuff everywhere. Like we had one nice wall that I sometimes took photos in front of. It's full of graffiti. Yeah, now. we should differentiate between tagging and graffiti. Yeah, there's one, one cool thing could be too. an art, and the other thing is just it's, vandalism. Yeah. And shit. Yeah. So yeah, that's a big minus. Big minus. Big minus. What's another minus? I think now we're too shaky to film. Okay, <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>
Very good. I think the bread makes all the difference. Like I would definitely get it. I wouldn't buy it myself, but make it myself or something. Or use like an alternative. I think that makes it very authentic. basically spent the entire day at Nisi's place um, from 12 to I think it's nine o'clock now and just had very nice conversations really good food um, I had some tofu scramble that was very yummy and some crepes with sugar and lemon juice and vegan butter vegan whipped butter that was a combo that is apparently very French I've never been to France and I've never really had that combo but it was really good I think it was vegan whipped butter that was like unsalted, unflavored with just a squeeze of a fresh lemon and then brown sugar. I think brown sugar. Welcome to my chaos room. Oh my god, the background is giving me anxiety. So I started my day with a really nice workout. I subscribed to Melissa Wood Health again. I don't know if you know her, but she's basically this like Pilates trainer from New York and she has her own app. I used to be subscribed, but then I unsubscribed because I never used it. But today I resubscribed and I did a workout and it was actually really good. Um, I forget how good it is. Like she does these quick workouts they're like 20 to 30 minutes and they really burn like you really work your glutes and your all different kinds of muscles and she has so many different videos now on the app which is kind of useful so i think i should really start using it because i was getting very frustrated with youtube um fitness videos i feel like there are some good ones out there and if you have any tips please let me know but i always find that like they're not intense enough or they're not like long enough or it's really hard to find the good ones um so yeah and also, I think if you pay for a subscription service, it's like 16 bucks a month, then you really feel like you have to use it. So I feel like maybe it's motivating me a bit more. <laughs> anyway, it's lunchtime now and I'm having what we had for dinner last night. It's a really yummy curry. This one's a really good one. It's like a sweet potato curry. I love making curries. It's one of my favorite meals. Um, I didn't film anything yesterday because I was just working away on my computer, which I'm about to do again now. But today I'm invi invited to a really fun event in the evening that I'm gonna take you to. And then tomorrow I'm gonna pack for New York because we're going to see my husband's family. <clears throat> He's from New York, his family currently lives in Connecticut and we're gonna go and see them for 10 days, which I'm very excited about. Um, of course, I'm gonna vlog that trip as well. But I think it, I might include the packing aspect in this vlog and then start a new vlog when we're going to New York. Because um, I, I love watching people pack their suitcase and like seeing what goes into it and like what they're thinking about. Um, yeah, anyway, I'm having lunch now. I'm trying to respond to as many emails as possible. I currently have 55 emails in my inbox and many of them are quite important or have been overdue for a couple weeks. So I'm trying to really catch up and respond to all of them. 
Um, not all of them. My goal is to get down to 40 emails. So do 10 of the big ones. Or maybe I get down to 35. I'll report back. <laughs> okay, I managed to get it down to 34 emails, but that's, it would have been 32 if I hadn't gotten two emails from my tax accountants. Um, but I'm pretty proud. I'm, I'm satisfied. And I think the rest I might do on the flight to New York because that's always what I do. I like just do the offline email edits. Anyway, I'm gonna go take a shower now because I just got a very last minute appointment at my hairdressers. And then I'm off to the event that I'm taking you with me. It's together with Herrlich Dining and um, Zizan. And it's some like dinner event and I'm very excited. I haven't been to like a dinner event in a long time. I'm freshly showered, but I'm about to go fix that hair. Um, this is my outfit. I'm kind of starting to regret it. I'm not sure. I love the top. It's this oversized um, cotton shirt from uh, by Marlene Birger. And then the earrings are from Leah Studio, my favorite earrings. And then I'm wearing my Pauline Paris bag. And then I'm wearing the slow label wide leg pants and some boots by AD. I will link everything down below. It's nice, but it's just very oversized, like everything is. I usually wear this top with some straight leg jeans and like ballet flats. And the ballet flats definitely kind of um, balance it out, but it's cold outside. <laughs> and so like, I don't really know an equivalent for that. So, but we'll be seated most of the time. So people see it by top half, which is not too baggy looking, I think. I don't know. I, I, I never wear colors, but this kind of blue, for some reason, it's so classic. And I think the reason why I don't wear cl colors is because I feel like it's not timeless and I feel like it's not classic and I get very sick and tired of seeing that color that I wear for some reason. But then every now and then I find something like this where I'm like, it just screams timelessness. Like I will like this color for a long time. Um, yeah, anyway, so this is my look. Uh, I'm not sure. I thought I should show you my hair. It's um, nice and shorter. It's much softer and it's always such a good feeling when I go to the hairdresser because then my hair doesn't tangle so easily and just feels a bit lighter. Um, I also think it suits me better when it's a little bit shorter. Um, anyway, we were talking about cutting it this short and I, I'm not quite ready yet, but maybe in the summertime. So uh, I don't know. You should tell me if you think that it would suit me. I usually have my hair like behind my head and very often behind my ears, like kind of like this. And so sometimes I'm like, it could just be short, but I don't know. Anyway, I am off to run some errands now. And then when I'm back, I'm gonna have to pack and I'm gonna take you with me. Um, it's getting quite dark and this bulb right here is so weak, but I hope that I have enough light to show you what I'm packing. I'm kind of excited. I don't know why, but I love the challenge of having to pack in a small suitcase everything I need for 10 days. I mean, we have like one bigger one to share, but we have no carry-on suitcases and we have to share one big one that can't be more than 20 kilograms. So that's quite the challenge. And it's also winter time. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. Okay, as promised, I'm gonna take you along on my packing decisions. I've already made a pre-selection and I think I'm pretty good. I think I have a good, Amount of stuff, not too much. I don't know, we'll see. Um, anyway, I use these packing cubes. I don't really have any pretty ones. This one's bright red and has a uh, branding on it, but uh, they're very useful, so I recommend if you don't have any. 
it's very good for packing. I just basically put my underwear, bras, socks, my pajamas, that kind of stuff goes in here. Usually I manage to squeeze in my fitness stuff as well, but it's currently hanging on the laundry rack, drying um, in time, hopefully for the flight. And then, yeah, this goes in the suitcase and it's very useful to have it all compact. Next up, bottoms. When I pack jeans, I always try to also remember what kind of shoes I'm bringing so I can basically match it and make sure that the shoes I'm bringing work with the jeans because that's not always the case, especially in the wintertime. I feel like in the summertime, I just wear flip-flops and it's the easiest thing to travel with, but um, in the wintertime, it's not so easy. I have some cream denims. I'm also packing some baggy black jeans from Armed Angels. And then skirts, I've decided to pack this long black knitted skirt. It has this ribbed texture um, and it's from Jen and June. And I've decided to also pack a short skirt. I think it's so nice to mix it up in the winter time and have something short as well with some black tights and some boots and a warm turtleneck. Okay, next up, let's do sweaters. Not so many to be honest. I'm traveling, I'm traveling with a hoodie, so I have that as well, but it's not really anything nice I would wear out. I would maybe wear it to lounge around at home. Um, it's gonna be pretty cold in New York, so I'm basically packing some of my warmest sweaters. I've gone for this um, Slow Label sweater. It's from my own brand, um, and it's one of the first samples we've ever gotten for knitwear. And I just love it because it's really, really warm and it's um, organic merino wool. Then I'm packing this turtleneck sweater. It's just a gray turtleneck and has these slits on the side. Um, just goes really well with the black bottoms, any black skirt or black jeans. And then I'm just packing this um, knitted sweater. It's pretty thin and light and actually kind of see-through. So I usually wear it with a nude bra and no top underneath. Um, so it's more like, um, like a top rather than a sweater I would put on over stuff. So I pretty much only have two sweaters and I think that's kind of a bit of an issue, but I think it's fine. I wear these all the time on rotation anyway. And my suitcase is getting pretty full already. I don't know about you, but with tops, I go overboard. I pack way too many and I need to really, really think about the amount of days I'm even spending there. We're also invited to a birthday party. And so I think I'm gonna, I mean, it's a birthday party for my little niece, but still, maybe this will be the top I will wear for it. It's this asymmetrical top, um, also ripped texture from Ro. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce this, this brand. I love it, but honestly, I never wear synthetics anymore ever since I started the slow label and we only work with natural materials. And so something made out of like, I think nylon or something is just like, I just, I feel that my body just can't breathe and it's really something to get used to. I love the look of these kinds of tops and that's why I bought it because I know it's timeless and it's this kind of piece that will wash well. That's just a thing with synth synthetics and it will stay beautiful for a long time. But the feeling it has on my body, like, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm very much like a lover of like natural materials to say. I love packing a good amount of long sleeves in the winter time to wear under my sweaters and just to like keep myself warm. I don't tend to pack a lot of t-shirts um, just because I just love wearing long sleeves in the winter. Um, one long sleeve I'm definitely packing <laughs> at least at least one in each color maybe even two in each color because I literally live in, live in them um, is this boat neck top. It's also from the slow label from my brand. It's made of tensile and it's just like the softest, most flattering, but also like it's basic, but it's special. And it's this kind of base layer that you can just wear every day, put some jewelry on and you look really good. Then I got this brown long sleeve. It's actually one of the only brown pieces I have in my wardrobe. And I love that brown is making a comeback. So I love that I got this one. And then last but not least, this gray long sleeve from Armed Angels. I think it's made out of, yeah, it's made out of modal tensile and it's just the softest piece ever. Like honestly, it's like butter. And then I will also pack the boat neck top in black, but it's currently hanging on the laundry rack. One more long sleeve I've decided to bring is this Reformation top. My mom shrunk it, shrunk it in the wash, and so it's very tight, um, but I still like it. I love the rib texture and the look of it, and it's just very cropped and tight, but I can make it work. So I'm packing two t-shirts um, just for the days where it's not so cold. Um, definitely packing the slow label one, the classic tee. It's made of 100% organic cotton and we chose a really, really soft fabric. It feels so good and it just like looks really nice. It's a very classic cut and just works well with everything. 
Then sticking with the slow label theme, I'm also packing our tank top. Um, it looks like this and it's just, you have to feel it to understand it. We have so many reviews of people like, um, I bought it because I was curious, but oh my God, I didn't realize it was gonna be my favorite piece of my wardrobe. Like it looks basic. It looks like just a tank top, but actually the stitching is super special and the material is like nice and thick and it's like so lovely and stretchy. It like really hugs everything in and it's like a basic tank top, but it has like also very flattering um, neckline. So it's just really nice. And we launched it pretty late in the fall, I think. And so I'm so excited for summertime to come because then it's just like the perfect piece to just throw on and go outside and just wear a skirt with it or something. Like it's an easy going piece. And the best thing is most of the reviews agree with me. You don't really need to wear a bra because it just really holds everything so nicely that you can just throw the top on and go outside. Um, so yeah, I wear these all the time. Then I'm also bringing our reversible tank tops. They're ripped, have a ripped structure. And the shirt I'm packing is this one from Marlene Berger. It's this very oversized shirt and I just love it. It's like the perfect kind of crispy cotton and I love wearing it with um, a tank top underneath. And last but not least, moving on to one dress that I'm packing. It's this one from Aeron. It's a ripped textured dress. It's I think also made of like I think nylon, it's this kind of material where it's like very thick and like holds everything well and just has a very interesting um, rip pattern as well. And it has an open back. I don't know if you can tell, but basically has like a, I think oval shaped cutout in the back, which makes it really special. And it's very long and pretty warm and has long sleeves. So it's um, perfect for the winter time. And then I think um, that's it for clothing. I'll show you what I bring in terms of jewelry. I love this container, this jewelry box. It's the best thing to travel with um, because you can store so many different things in different places. I am bringing two earrings in gold, two in silver. Then I have this um, cuff, which I love. Bracelet, a couple of uh, rings, mostly gold, one silver, and then a necklace, and then some sunglasses. So this is what I'm packing in my hand luggage in terms of like liquids and stuff. I have my toothpaste, uh, it's like portable toothpaste in this container. And then a toothbrush, hand cream. I got like a concealer, powder, something for my um, eyebrows. And then just like a refreshing spray and a serum and uh, yeah, like a washcloth even. This expandable one here I had gifted once. And my contacts, lip balm, very important. And just some moisturizer and eye, under eye pads. I don't know what they're called. We've made it to Connecticut and I'm gonna end the vlog here. Thanks for watching. It's been really fun to do this in English. Honestly, it was easier than I thought. And I feel like it gave me some like new motivation to show you like different aspects and like talk about things that I maybe wouldn't have talked about if I had spoken in German for some reason it brought in something new. I don't know if you felt that and if you liked it. If you did, please leave a comment and let me know. I would love to hear your feedback, really honestly. I have no idea what I'm gonna continue with. Definitely not gonna switch 100%, but like maybe I will integrate a couple of vlogs in English, a couple in German. I don't know, yet. Either way, uh, I'm looking forward to your comments and please like the video if you enjoyed watching this. And if you've not subscribed to the channel yet, please hit the subscribe button. I upload every Sunday. I try to upload Sundays at 10 a.m. Um, yeah, Berlin time. And yeah, in terms of Berlin, it was also interesting to have a chat with Scott about like the things we like and dislike about Berlin. I feel like the list would have been much longer, but we didn't really go into too much detail. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I always get the question, what do you like about Berlin? Why do you live there? And maybe that gave you some um, insight as well. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna go now and next vlog will be from Connecticut and New York. So make sure to check that out on Sunday. Mm -hmm.